mustn't forget that these chemicals were designed for warfare. They are the ultimate weapons of mass destruction. Every one of them came out of the war system. Now they are in our drinking water. Ça peut paraître exagéré, euh, franchement ça ne l'est pas. Et tout ça c'est pas dans 50 ans, dans 100 ans, c'est on est en pleine actualité. People assume that there's somebody in the government protecting their water supply and that's often not the case. One of the most extraordinary examples of that is the most common pesticide sprayed in the United States, atrazine. Atrazine itself is an herbicide or a weed killer and it's used on on products such as corn. It is the number one contaminant found in drinking water and groundwater and surface water. Initially, we were contracted by Syngenta, the makers of atrazine, and their interest was in trying to understand whether or not, so they said, whether or not atrazine could function as an endocrine disruptor, meaning could it interfere with hormones such as thyroid hormone, testosterone, estrogen. We found that atrazine had a number of effects, but most significantly, atrazine demasculize the exposed male frogs. I would even say chemically castrated. We went on to show that in addition to being demasculized, they were also feminized. So in other words, male amphibians would grow ovaries and, and even produce eggs. Fish show similar effects. Their sperm counts drop and they start to make egg yolk protein. Does that mean that atrazine is causing a global decline in sperm counts in men? Again, the experimental and the epidemiological data suggest that atrazine may play a very significant role. It's also associated with prostate cancer and some of the factories that produce atrazine, as well as with breast cancer and some studies that look at women whose water is contaminated with atrazine. One big concern might be fetuses that, in effect, are living in water. So if that fetus gets exposed to a chemical, it's constantly drinking its amniotic fluid. In the entire European Union, atrazine has been banned. And in effect, that is the only way you can limit atrazine levels because it can travel up to 600 miles, 1,000 kilometers in the rainwater. In fact, of the 80 million pounds of atrazine we use in the United States, about a half million pounds of that atrazine comes back in the rainwater. And the irony is, I guess, that you know, here's a European company selling 80 million pounds of a product in the United States where it's not even legal in the home country. When the Environmental Protection Agency under the Bush administration decided that it needed to at least appear to do something about the problem after we sued them, um, they ended up sitting down with the people that made atrazine in private negotiations. They met over 50 times privately with the company, and they cut a deal. No crackdown, no enforcement action, no banning of the pesticide. I just, I've never seen blood like this. They're just pouring this stuff right in. This is going into Lake Titicaca, which is the sacred lake to the, the indigenous peoples here. We can see that because that's the part that it's open. Of course. But you don't see the whole thing that of they course. are doing to the river here. What they're here. going to do here is they're going to divert they're, it yeah, and they're under just this cement. Cover. Yeah. They're not going to clean it up. They no, just, no, it won't no. be so ugly and open. Yes. It'll still smell the way Yes. Y precisamente se tenía que involucrar a la fuerza este río porque hay mal olor porque sale de, del matadero. La sangre, todo lo que carnean este, el ganado, esa agua sucia echan los vecinos. No tenemos encantarillado en algunas zonas. Entonces eso, esos vecinos a la fuerza tienen que salir a los riachuelos para hacer su necesidad. So let me understand. Suez said they put an $80 million treatment facility here. Not only did they not do that, but they've diverted the raw sewage into yeah. this river that goes into Lake Titicaca. Yeah, this is a river that crosses all the city, so it's, it's around the city that they are doing the same thing.
Traditional water has been delivered as a public service by governments. But in the last 10 years, three major water companies from Europe have started delivering water on a for-profit basis in many parts of the world. They are very powerful. They're all among the top 100 corporations, Fortune 500 companies. They're very wealthy. They're growing very fast. And basically, developing countries, poor countries, are being forced all over the world to hand over basic control of their water systems to a for-profit multinational from Europe or far away. Suez is one of the two world leaders in the water distribution, water treatment in, uh, in the world. I'm working with a French company, uh, a large water operator called Vivendi, Vivendi uh, Environment. We are active in more than 100 different countries. We are active since 150 years. So we have a very, very long-term operator in water business. Eso es, eh, es agua, es, es, por eso es el agua de Limán. Pero el agua de aquí está contaminada. Pero ahorita está saliendo limpio. Hace rato han visto que estaba negro el agua. Y ahora, un poco más tarde, el agua ya viene con gusanos. Así, jugando en la calle, vienen aquí, se reciben y toman esa agua. Entonces, esa agua les hace daño. El objetivo de la privatización fue el de dotar del servicio de agua potable y alcantarillado en las ciudades de La Paz y El Alto. Pero, durante todo este proceso, evidenciamos que en solamente en la ciudad del Alto quedan excluidos 208 mil personas del servicio de agua potable. No tenemos ni agua ni luz. Ahí está, con esta polvadera nos, se nos ensucia la ropa más y hasta nos trata de que somos tan sucios. No es porque uno quiere, sino que porque no hay agua. Gente humilde, ¿no? Algunos apenas se hacen alcanzar para el consumo. Y si vamos a hacer privatizar, la gente de dónde ya va a traer dinero. Nosotros hemos dicho que aguas de Lilimani se tiene que ir. Vecinos no tienen agua, no tienen alcantarillado. Como ustedes posiblemente se han enterado mediante la prensa en sus países, nosotros aquí en Bolivia estamos llegando a subir. Pueden comprarle a nuestro dirigente, pero no nos van a comprar a todos. This is a country in which nearly one out of every ten children will die before the age of five. And most of those deaths are related to illnesses that come from a lack of clean drinking water. So when people of El Alto say enough with water privatization, it's because if they don't have access to clean drinking water, their children's health is at risk. Did Bolivia privatize the water systems of Cochabamba and El Alto? It's not like Bolivian citizens.